I just, uh, you know, I'm gonna let Malik uh, kind of handle it, and uh, we'll I'll answer some questions afterwards. Okay. Uh, how are you guys doing today? Um, uh, if you guys haven't heard already, um, today I'm withdrawing my name from the 2016 uh, NBA draft. I'm proud to announce that I'll be returning to you know a place I call home, NC State, the Wolfpack family. Um, it's been it's been so it's been a different time, man. I'm happy to announce that you know we're looking forward to this 2016-2017 season, and I know there's been speculation on whether or not I'd end the draft or return to NC State to finish my college career, but one thing I do want to address that you know this place to me has became a second home, and. Through it all, uh, I could look back at Raleigh. I know it's calling home. Uh, look back at the coaching staff, Coach Gottfried, uh, a head coach who I truly believe in, uh, who believed in me, especially for my freshman and sophomore seasons, to showcase my abilities and to show you guys what I'm capable of. Um, it was never my intent to scare you guys or to cause a storm or anything of that nature. But I was going through a time in my life where I didn't know all the answers either. You know, I didn't have all the answers to give you. Um, I never thought of leaving here. You know, my biggest my biggest choice was never anything about transferring. Um, it was more so to try and reach my dream and be a professional athlete. And that's a dream that I still have and I'm still going to carry on with me, regardless of how many years it takes. Um, like I said, I believe in the staff. I truly believe in Coach Godfrey. And I believe that they're going to carry on my development as a person as well as a basketball player. Um, and definitely a student as well. Uh, the ultimate goal is to be a success in life, to keep my character, and, you know, to stay a good kid, uh, be a student. You know, that's what we're here for. Um, we're blessed. I'm blessed that Coach G extended me a scholarship offer, you know, when I was 17, 18 years old and that I'm at this point here where you guys are waiting my decision and listening to me speak. Um, the last two years I've improved in every area, um, which gave me the opportunity to hopefully excel mentally and physically. And also it helped me, you know, grow a special bond with my teammates. Um, there was, this was something I couldn't go away from, you know, something I couldn't turn my back on. Uh, I look forward to having a special season with the new acquired pieces, with the old pieces. And it's just, I think everyone should be excited and be happy for what we have going forward. Um, I've never lost confidence in my coaching staff and my teammates and my program. Um, I love this place, you know. This is where my heart resides. Uh, like I said, Raleigh is my second home. I usually have my Boston hat on, but I, you know, I took it off for you know, the interview. And you know, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, I got mentors in Coach Early, Coach Pierre, Coach Schroyer, most importantly, Coach Gottfried, that allowed me to sit here today and be the kid I am and the talent I am, and just to respectfully take my name out the draft and enjoy these later years in college. Malik, it's time for a few questions. Malik, what kind of feedback did you get from the, uh, the teams that you worked We do have with? mics also, if we want to pass them oh, I'm sorry. Is that a joke, <clears throat> What, what kind of feedback did you get from the teams that you worked out for as to what you need to work on you know, to improve to get to that next level? Um, you know, the, the NBA is changing. You know, um, I see myself as a power forward who wants to be able to be able to stretch the floor and make plays. Um, definitely they want to see me be able to put the ball on the floor more and they want to see a consistent jump shot. And those are all things I truly believe that I can do here at NC State, you know, going forward. How does it help that uh, you have some pieces now that will allow you to play power forward more permanently? Uh, it's definitely big time. Um, everybody's going to do a little bit, you know, to help us achieve our ultimate goal, which is to win titles. I mean, that's why we lace them up every day to put another banner up here. Um, and that's what we want to do, especially adding Omir, um, adding Dennis, adding Tor Torin, Terry. You know, it's gonna be, we're going to be a hard team to stop. I was talking to Coach earlier, um, 
who are you going to double team? You know, I, I have, I've seen him here play. I personally believe that he may acquire one. Dennis, we all know the talent he is, and I attracted a double team last year. But I feel like with the pieces we have this year, you're not going to be able to individually pinpoint on one player. You're going to have to stop a whole entire team. Raise your hand if you have any questions. Pass the report. I know you said that at no point did you ever intend on leaving NC State. Um, you know, how close were you to potentially staying in the draft? Um, I mean, if somebody told you that your dreams are right there, you know, maybe 24 hours away, maybe a decision away, I think it's something you take the time to really truthfully think about, you know. And I grew up every day wanting to play this game and wanting to f make sure my family's financially stable and to take care of the people I care about and to play the sport you love. I don't think you can ask for anything more. And I was that close, and I'm still that close. I feel like with another year of maturity, another year to get my game to where it needs to be, I'll be able to more comfortably enter the draft and take care of my family and make everyone proud. Anything else? Thank you, guys. You guys have any questions at all for me? How has your outlook changed in the last, I don't know, three days? Well, I think. Um, we're excited about this week, obviously, and uh, kind of solidifying uh, the roster with Omir and Malik. And then obviously we're still hoping that BJ will follow suit, which we think he will. But that's, you know, hope coming soon, hopefully. But we feel good. You know, I'm not one of those guys that, that ever uh, kind of bought into the sky is falling. But uh, at the same time, we can all take a deep breath now and move forward. Coach, I'm curious, how do you feel having gone through this process now? Everyone talked about, you know, there's going to be more time with the draft yeah. as, as kids can figure out what they're going to do and have more time to figure out. How do you like yeah. being through this process? Was it what you thought it would be? And do you think it helped Malik? Well, I think the, uh, the one thing we all have to understand, I think this is going to become more of the norm uh, with the new NBA rule. And, you know, I was in Chicago at the pre-draft camp. I was there to watch Cat and support Cat. And, at the same time, I sat there alongside of about 15 other college coaches, you know, watching guys in Chicago that, you know, hadn't made a decision yet on whether to, you know, stay in or stay out of the draft. And so I just think it's it's more of the norm. Um, you know, what my my hope too is that guys like Malik or whomever that may be, um, I want those guys to be successful and to be long-term NBA players. And uh, so, you know, at the same time, I also want our team here to be awfully successful, too. So hopefully the process the way it is now. Uh, here's an example with Malik where he, you know, he kind of evaluated uh, what they said. He was invited to some teams to, to work out for them. He got to listen to their feedback. And I think the ultimate goal is hopefully that helps everybody, helps guys make a good decision. So but I do think it's going to be somewhat more of the norm uh, into the month of May because of this new rule. To kind of follow up on Powell's question, just with more guys, you're not sure if they're coming back, and it seems like more and more top guys, recruits, are waiting to the this kind of spring-summer period. Yeah. What is that like, and how has it changed as a coach to kind of construct rosters months, you know, just a few months before the season starts? You know, I think that uh, college basketball right now, it's uh, it just is such a fluid situation with everybody. Now, if you think of all the different things, we've had close to 1,600 transfers, I think, in the last two years. So you've got that part of the game where there's a lot of kids changing schools. You have uh, kids now sometimes reclassifying forward, which, you know, a few years back, we never really heard of that very often. So now you've got guys that potentially could just finish their year that now potentially could be into this class. Then you have the fifth-year graduate transfers that are more than we've ever seen. Then you've got guys that are, you know, going in the draft and pulling out of the draft, and so your roster is a little bit uncertain there. And so I just think now in uh, college basketball, the landscape is changing, that your rosters may be a little more fluid than they've ever been because there's so many different parts that are moving 
all the time. So definitely changed. It makes it harder. I think what we have to do as coaches is adapt. It's just part of the turf now. And uh, we've got to make sure you still find ways to be competitive within that. Coach, what does, um, what does the addition of Amir um, add to this lineup? And have you heard anything about his uh, eligibility as well? Well, I think with Omir, uh, he's a very skilled, very talented guy. You know, we're really excited about him. I think as far as eligibility goes, I think it's common that most, you know, international players, especially the European kids, uh, there's a process they're going to have to go through to make sure that their amateurism and all those type things are in order. So that's something that we've done as much homework already that we can do. And the process will then play out. Uh, we feel good, but at the same time, you got to go through the process with the NCAA. So, um, you know, hopefully that'll all work out, and uh, he'll be ready to go first day we start. Uh, with the exception of, of BJ, you feel like you're pretty set now. Or are you still looking to maybe add another piece or two? I think that we're uh, in a position where uh, we'd still like to add some guys to this roster, and. Uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, we went through a year this past year where we were probably shorthanded to begin with. Then we had injuries on top of that. And that's not a fun place to be in at all. So uh, having done that, uh, we're at a position right now with a mindset that we're going to try to add as much depth as possible. When you think back to going to Turkey in March, how fast did this kind of come together? You know, it came together pretty quick. And uh, my trip to Istanbul was quick. I left on a Friday night, and I was in my own bed in Raleigh on Sunday night. And uh, so, um, you know, that's just uh, the way those things go. And uh, I thought when Omir came over here for his official visit, I thought he connected with our guys. I thought that was really important. And, uh, you know, he liked it here a lot. So uh, it happened fast, but, you know, we like it. So update on Terry's health. Terry, I watched him work out this morning, just today. And uh, I would say, it, and from my viewpoint, I think he's pretty close to 100%. Uh, he may say he's maybe 90, 95, but he's getting there. And, uh, you know, he's fully involved in every workout, does every activity. Um, and I think when guys have injuries like that, I think there just takes a, there's a period where, they got to get that confidence back to f just turn it all the way loose. And not sure he's there yet. I think he will be, but I think he's pretty close. So, I mean, he's a guy that we're counting on at this point uh, to be 100% when we start up. How have the new additions to the staff kind of energized things, and in particular with the recruitment of Darius Hicks? I'm excited about our staff. I think, uh, you know, both Heath and uh, Butch have done a great job in a short amount of time. Uh, from recruiting to uh, the workouts with our players, I think they've both done a marvelous job on the floor. I think they've also connected with our current roster really well. Uh, they're building relationships that I think is really important. So I'm really excited about those two guys and what they're going to add this year. And then, you know, you mentioned Darius. Um, you know, we're really excited about him. You know, I think he's a he's a really good player, and uh, he's going to get a lot better in time. Got a great body, got great athleticism, and uh, you know, we're thrilled that we're able to you know have a guy like that join us in May. So uh, that ends up being a really good thing. Just to keep rolling through the injury carousel with Lenard. Is that a mm -hmm. situation where you might not have a good picture until much later of yep. how healthy he could be and what he could do next? Yep, I just went over there. I saw him this morning. He had surgery yesterday, so I spent some time with Lenard today. Uh, surgery went well. Uh, you know, they took out a 16-inch steel rod and put in a thicker steel rod uh, in his in his uh, you know down his shin. I would anticipate him red shirting. You know, unless it's something very unusual that he just miraculously came back quicker than we thought. I, I think my hope for Lennard, and I think he shares the same hope, is that he just needs time. You know, he needs time to fully heal, fully get himself ready, and then go through an off season where he can actually work out every day and go through all of our skill development drills. You know, he missed all that last summer. He missed every day of the skill workout. And I think he wants a, a a, you know, a period of time where he can really get in shape and really get healthy. 
And so, uh, you know, saying all that, I could, you know, see where he would be a redshirt guy this year. We'll wait and see for sure, but that's my anticipation. You've proven to be a problem solver with these roster changes and exits and entries and late in the game especially. Mm -hmm. it, have you already started thinking about next year? And would you prefer to stay out of these situations mm -hmm. where, you Here, know, here's like, the, there's like a nine alarm fire over yeah, in. Yeah. Well, I, I never. I never dialed 911 this year. I know a lot of people probably did, but I, I never did. You know, Cat Barber was the situation where we anticipated that prior to the year. Cat and I had o open and honest conversations, and um, you know, you never know for sure. But I felt fully his full intention was to play his junior year, enter the draft. Um, you know, as the whole dust settles here, uh, we had Cody and Caleb transfer, and that was it. And they're twins. And I want the best for Cody and Caleb. When we sign Cody and Caleb, you know, you're taking, when you take twins, it's a dynamic that's just really unique. You're getting two guys. You're not getting one. And that's a good thing. If they decide to transfer, you lose two uh, because it's the same situation. So as all the dust settles from all of the, uh, the panic uh, situations, you had Cat, who we knew would probably leave. Cody and Caleb, certainly we wanted those guys to stay. And, but it's also not uncommon to see that around the country. Uh, I was on the phone with John Beeline in Michigan. They had four kids transfer. Ohio State had four. You know, you look around the country, and um, so we had, you know, twins. And certainly would have hoped for those guys to be here, but we wish them the best. So uh, hopefully in the future, uh, you know, your roster somewhat stays a little bit more concrete, but at the same time, transferring and 1,600 guys over two years around the country, I'm not naive to think that's not going to happen from time to time. So, and I hope that we have guys uh, that are good enough uh, that will evaluate the NBA process. I mean, that means you've got a good player uh, who's able to do that too. So I just think it's kind of the state of the game. It's kind of where we are. And I think that's more the norm than anything else. You mentioned Cat. What kind of feedback are you getting on him? I think Cat's got a great chance to, uh, from the guys I've talked to, uh, potentially push himself into the end of the first round. I thought he played fantastic in Chicago. Uh, I talked to a lot of different guys on a lot of different teams. Um, and, you know, maybe late first, early second round. But uh, I thought he played terrific. The one thing that Cat has that I keep hearing the NBA guys uh, talk about is great speed and his – shooting has improved dramatically. And when you look at Cat Barber, and I tell guys in the NBA this all the time, you look at his freshman year to his sophomore year to his junior year, and you see the development each year. If you project that for another two or three years where he can continue to improve, um, I think you got a guy that's got a chance to be a really good player in the NBA. So I'm getting great feedback. Um, we'll hope, hope for the best with Cat. I guess there's still a week left before the withdrawal date, but have you talked to BJ or about yep. what that process has been like? Yeah, so we've far? talked. He's in school. He's here, you know, taking classes. And, uh, again, my hope is that uh, that will take care of itself here pretty soon.